Hello, Laverne here, and I'd like to thank you for joining me. May this video be a blessing to those who are and to those who will become members of the elect. And may the message in this video honor and glorify our Father in heaven and his kingdom. How many of you would agree with the statement that the United States per capita has more false prophets than any other nation in the world? That the United States is a hotbed and a breeding ground for false prophets. I am sure that there will be some who will agree with this statement right from the beginning. Others will argue, I have no evidence or proof of this. The United States is a Christian nation after all, therefore it cannot harbor and it cannot be producing the greatest number of false prophets. There will be those who will want to argue that without a doubt you know that Islam is going to be the religion from which the false prophet and antichrist are going to come from. Therefore, Islam must contain the most false prophets. That means then that Middle Eastern countries will harbor and will contain or have in it the greatest number of false prophets. Then there will be those who will want to argue that they know without a doubt that the Vatican and Catholicism is the great prostitute and that the Pope is either the false prophet or the Antichrist. Therefore, Catholicism, the Catholic Church, must have the greatest number of false prophets. That means then that the greatest number of false prophets per capita will have to be found in some country where Catholicism is able to uh, claim the most of the most members but think about this in Islam if you are a false prophet you will pay a very dear price for it you do not have anyone and everyone claiming to be a prophet claiming to interpret prophecy or to have visions and dreams and then passing these visions and dreams onto the congregation that is not nearly as commonplace as what it is in Protestant churches today. Then think about Catholicism. When was the last time you heard a priest, a bishop or an archbishop or even the Pope himself standing behind the pulpit preaching on end time prophecy interpretation or speaking on some vision or dream that they received themselves? When was the last time you heard Catholics doing such a thing? If you look at the YouTube videos pertaining to either interpretation of end time prophecy or having to do with a dream or vision that someone received, when you look at the number of these videos that are being uploaded by Catholics, the number is very small compared to those that are being uploaded by Protestants. So this fact alone makes it clear that there are more people claiming to be prophets in Protestantism than what there is in any other religion, any other denomination. So it is the Protestants that are really producing the false prophets. Now, why do I say they are false? Because I guess an argument could be made, no, Protestants are producing legitimate prophets, true prophets of God. So, which is it? I mean, I believe there really is no debate as to Protestants claiming to produce or are having people who claim to be prophets, claim to have prophecies to pass on to others. I don't think there's any argument that there are more Protestants making such claims than what there are Catholics or what there are Muslims. The question then is, are these prophets true men and women of God or are they false prophets? Because there really are only two churches in the world. Yes, there are many different uh, Christian denominations, but there are only two churches in the world and both can be thought of as a body. Now, the body of the one true church is headed by Christ. The head of the true church 
is Yeshua. The head of the other church, the only other church, is Satan. Satan is the head of the heretical Antichrist church. So, as a believer, you fall into one of these two churches. Either you are part of the elect and part of the one true church where Christ is the head of it, or you fall into the other church. And it doesn't matter that there are many different denominations. It doesn't matter that there are many different gospels, many different incompatible doctrines and theologies being taught. They are all part of the same body, all part of the same heretical church. So the church of Satan, the heretical antichrist church, where a imitation Christ is followed and a, uh, a false gospel is taught. There are many such false gospels and imitation Christ. But the head of that church is Satan, who is the ruler of this world. So we need to ask, are these people claiming to be prophets? Are they true prophets or are they false prophets? Well, if you look at some of the things that they are prophesying, we can see clearly that they are false. And then if we dig deeper and we look at their fruit, we can see that they're false. And if we look at the doctrine and theology that they teach, we can see that they're false. So there are many ways to determine whether or not someone is a true or false prophet. Now, one of the reasons that these false prophets are, are, are being bred in the United States is because of a new movement known as the New Apostolic Reformation. Now, if we go back a few decades ago, a new teaching, a fairly new teaching, was that if you are a true believer, you receive the Holy Spirit. You have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, you also receive the gift of speaking in tongues. That speaking in tongues is actually evidence that you do have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. There are those people who say, if you aren't speaking in tongues, then there's a good chance the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in you. This is something that began within the evangelical movement, the different evangelical denominations and churches. It is also part and parcel of many Pentecostal churches and their beliefs. So we had this belief that first came about, this idea that all believers have the gift of speaking in tongues. And then this lie has expanded in recent years to the point that there are those teaching that every believer who receives the indwelling of the Holy Spirit will also receive all of the gifts that the Holy Spirit has to offer. And all you have to do is learn from an existing prophet how to unlock that gift so that you too can begin prophesying and supposedly edifying the church with your prophecies. Well, I tell you, this is a lie from the devil. It is part of the second church, the heretical church. These are lies of the church of Satan, where a antichrist, a imitation Christ, is being raised up and will one day very soon come upon the world stage. But these false prophets are setting the stage for the false prophet and the Antichrist. It's important to understand what is going on in the United States because they end up exporting these lies to other nations. And so this lie that all believers can receive the gift of prophecy and can learn how to prophesy, this is a lie that will spread to other nations and it's going to help set the stage for the false prophet and the antichrist who will come on the stage the world stage and they will be preaching and teaching from this book here the protestant bible made up of 66 books it is that book it is the protestant bible that is behind the creation and the birthing of all of these uh, this, I'm sorry, this multitude of false prophets. For we have 
a multitude of false prophets, each leading multitudes of people astray. This is why I'm making this video to expose these false prophets. False prophets who many of them preach the prosperity gospel, but not possibly all of them. There are those who don't preach the prosperity gospel, but they will preach once saved, always saved, and salvation being by faith alone or by grace alone. There are those who preach the teaching of universalism, whereby everyone is eventually saved, even Satan. So these are the, the many false teachings within the second church, the heretical church. And there are these false prophets prophesying, many of them prophesying wealth and prosperity, that they will denounce anyone that is talking any sort of doom and gloom. They'll denounce them, saying that all is well, that we are going to enter a period of prosperity. Don't worry about the Antichrist and false prophet. That's a thing of the past. You know, that all came about in the year 70 AD with the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. There are those prophets who make such claims. There are people like Kenneth Copeland who made the claim that 2018 would be the year of revival in the United States and the world at large. A great year for revival. Following the death of Billy Graham, we were supposed to see this great revival. Then go back a little bit more, and we have those people who are talking about the sign in the heavens. This was supposed to see either the rapture, many claim that in September there would be a pre-trib rapture, that all of a sudden we would find all kinds of people missing. This lie about the sign in the heavens, how popular did that become for their 15 minutes of fame, there were people talking about this sign in the heavens. Of course, some of those people have continued on. It's like nothing ever happened and they continue to prophesy, continue to preach and teach. But they are false prophets. You have people like Jim Baker, Paula White, Benny Hinn, Carl Gallops, uh, Lance Walnow. And the list goes on and on. Many of them involved in the prosperity gospel, others involved in the New Apostolic Reformation, some involved in both. And what they are doing, they are working to help produce. You can find online, you can find on YouTube, you can find on Amazon books that will teach you how to supposedly unlock your gift of prophecy. This is why I say the United States is a hotbed and it is producing new false prophets at an astounding rate and this is one of the signs that we are living in the end hour of the end times that there would be this great increase of false prophets and deception that the heretical church will grow and it is only the heretical church that is at this point growing but understand that during a period of time or during during a time and at a place when it is the darkest that is when the light will shine the brightest and so it will be during the great tribulation that the true bride of Christ and the members of the elect are going to shine their brightest so for those people who believe in a pre-trib rapture well you are going to be very disappointed you are going to be part of the darkness that the true elect will be trying to shine a light through. The idea of a pre-trib rapture is a lie that is deceiving many. Many false prophets are predicting prosperity, prophesying prosperity. There are those, of course, who are prophesying doom and gloom, but for the wrong reasons, claiming that it's because prayer has been taken out of schools, claiming that the reason God's wrath will be poured out onto the United States is because they've changed the law so that gay marriage is accepted now, that abortion is legal. This is why God's wrath is going to be poured out onto the United States. But if people back Donald Trump, then things can be reversed. But I tell you, these are the very false prophets that I'm referring to. 
because it is not what's going on outside of the church that is going to bring about God's wrath, but rather it's what's going on inside the church. It is because there's no difference between how a Christian lives their life and how an unbeliever lives theirs. Sin is just as rampant and as, as obvious in the church as it is outside of it. And it is because there is no difference. It is because more is expected of the believer, not less. It is because of this belief that if you've said a sinner's prayer, you have a license to sin. And so people continue to sin. They don't repent of their sin. It is because of these things that God's wrath is going to be poured out. It is because of believers that God's wrath is going to be poured out. So don't think for a moment that because you are a believer that you're going to escape God's wrath. Because it is the heretical church and the vast majority of Christians who are part of it that God's wrath will be poured out. And the true church is going to be around. The true church is going to be tested. And they will be around to be a light during the greatest period of darkness in mankind's history, which will soon be upon us. So it is my hope that a prophet like Jonah will come to the United States and will preach and will be a witness against the wicked Christians and against the church of Satan. It is my hope that a prophet like Jeremiah, that a prophet like Elijah, that a prophet like John the Baptist will come to the United States and preach and will be a witness against this wicked generation and those people who claim to be prophets but who aren't. It is for this generation and it is for nations like the United States that Yeshua was talking to and about when he said there are going to be many who are going to come to me saying, Lord, Lord, we did wonderful things in your name. We healed people and we prophesied in your name. And yet Yeshua will say to many, get away from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. Even though these people are going to claim to have had a relationship with Christ, and even though they will have taught that others need to have a relationship, need to repent, need to repent once and say a sinner's prayer, they are going to come to our Lord and make these claims, say these things, claiming to have been a follower of His, claiming Him to have been their Lord and Savior, claiming to have loved Him, but he will say to many of them, get away, you worker of iniquity. Understand who he's talking to and about here. Understand that he is talking about believers, people who are professing believers, who actually prophesy in his name, and he will turn many of them away. All right, that's about all I have to say. Do you agree now that the United States is headed for destruction, is asking, begging for God's wrath to be poured out upon them, because that's what it looks like to me. So many people are seeking pastors, preachers, and teachers who will scratch their itching ears. Seeker-friendly pastors spreading a seeker-friendly gospel that is not saving anyone but is instead leading people to destruction. As always, I look forward to your comments and messages. Till next time, peace and blessings.